Hello, it is William calling from Movie Vlogs, and the Eurovision 2022 season is most definitely here because Bulgaria has given us the very first confirmed song. It is from Intelligent Music Project, and it's called Intention. Now, Sinan... Hey, my king! Love you so much! <laughs> you must be very excited over there in Bulgaria. <laughs> I am actually from Bulgaria, but I live in Germany, girl. Right now, I'm recording this on Germany territory. Girl, I have no idea what to expect. Like, this entry came from nowhere. I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> and I ha I don't know, actually, I never seen or heard of Intelligent Music Project. They seem very popular, but... I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. But I know some of the guys, like Slavin, he won uh, X Factor Bulgaria. And of course, Stojan Yonkolov. He's such a great person and such a great artist. You know, we know him from 27 and 2013 with Elitsa Tudrova. One of the best songs, Water. I love it. Are you ready to talk about it? <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> As you may have read on the Wooey Blogs website, Intelligent Music Project frequently invites an established singer or star to perform with them. And this time around, it is Ronnie Romero. You may know him from Rainbow. He is Chilean born, lives in Spain, has vast experience. And we were born just two weeks apart. He is a fellow Scorpio. Hey! And of course, the drummer, Stoyan, Eurovision alum with Alitza from 2007 and 2013. He took Voda, or helped take Voda, to the top five back in the day. All right. Time to listen to this hitting palay. Oh, oh, he's playing okay. PlayStation. I do play Nintendo Leather. Switch base. Stoyan. Okay. Lots of hair. Okay. Yes, Stoyan. He's like. <laughs> He's got a great voice. Is is the song about the video game or something? That's Albina's door. Ah, okay. Oh, girl, you better run okay, we're faster, building. honey. Sad. I like the rhythm. Oh, oh, this chorus is a little underwhelming. You know, this song feels like a um, um, soundtrack to a film, to a teenage, you know, Twilight or something, you know, this kind of film. Oh, she's running now. Girl! Okay, you know what, I would call 999 if some figure was chasing me through the woods. She's beautiful, this woman. Oh, I love how Stoyanian Kulov is like, you know, feeling himself. He's good, I like him very much. This chorus is weak. It It's flat. I like the verses okay. Oh my gosh. I expect something bigger. Okay. They have a very cohesive look. The tattoos, the black oh, yeah. clothing, lots of hair. Oh, okay, bridge. I don't know. I'm so sorry. This is a 70s vibe. This little bridge. It doesn't make me excited. Oh! Oh, guitar break! Oh, I like that part. Hello! Gotta get those festival of <laughs> <punkies folks. laughs> Yeah! Woo! I love that part. Okay. This chorus, again, I go back all. to the chorus. Oh, and that's all, girl. Mm. Oh, okay. It's really repetitive uh, and monotonous. Oh. 
Oh, she's herself. You better fight yourself first, bitch. It's, it's never, never too late, late to set, set foot, foot on, on the right path. path. Of course, it's all not. you need is a all firm need is intention. intention. Okay. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. Okay. It is never too late to revamp your song. Okay. This. This is not it. Bulgaria, you are the weakest link. As of December 5th, you are not my top one, you are my bottom one. This is disappointing, I'm not gonna lie. Releasing a song this early, if you're gonna do that, you need to make sure you have a good song so that it travels well over the next five to six months. This is already boring. The problem, well, I don't wanna say it's a problem because people have different musical tastes. I think this caters to fans of an old, older type of rock, maybe a rock we've heard a million times before. Um, yes, Monoskin won Eurovision, but they brought something new, musically, sonically, visually. This, we've seen and heard it all before in decades past. Okay, this song is not bad at all, but it didn't get me excited. I don't know, like, only that part, you know, the, the instrumental part after the bridge. It was amazing. I love when uh, rock songs have something like this, you know, they just let themselves, you know, loose when they play the guitars. I really like that part. But, oh my gosh, mm -mm. like it's a really good song, but it's nothing special, sadly. I was expecting something special, you know, every year since 2016, Bulgaria literally served us with, you know, different songs like uh, 2016, Poly Genova, and then we got Christian Kostov, and then we got Equinox. Oh my gosh, one of the best Bulgarian you know, Eurovision entries, like, ever. And Victoria. Like, every year we had so different and so special songs. This year, it's also different. It's super different from what we have sent. Although 2011 was also a bit kind of rocky song, you know, Pauli Genova with Nainat. But this one doesn't have that... Um, I love when songs have, you know, melodic. They are melodic. We've seen rock at Eurovision. It has very mixed fortunes. On the one hand, you've got the Moneskin, the Blind Channel, who really kill it. And then you've got other rock acts. I don't know, Albania 2013, Bladar and his colleague with Identitet. You know, I preferred Bladar and his colleague with Identitet. This is not even one of my favorite rock entries at Eurovision. I mean, Ireland 2009, Black Daisy, Sinead Mulvey, that was the bomb, and it did not make the final. So this, this is dead on arrival. I do not see this making the final. And I know we only have one song released so far, but this is just the reality. This doesn't have a memorable enough hook. There's not enough power and thrust in the chorus. They need to get some intention, go home, cut this up, give us a new song, or rather, a new version of this, or an entirely new song, or I'm sorry, it's game over. I want to read some comments on the Wee Wee Blogs website. This is Samo. Bulgaria, what have you done? They used to be one of those few countries that were almost guaranteed to send a great entry each year. What happened? No one can possibly think this will do well. Let's talk to Ashton. He says, I really thought Bulgaria might be able to pull through, but my fears of their song being really bad have been confirmed. They couldn't keep that qualification streak going forever, I guess. And this is Ukraine Stan, a bit of a meh song, feels like they barely qualify, if even. Intention is not... I, I really hate to say that it's not for Eurovision or something like that. Of course, we can see the songs on the stage of Eurovision and stuff, but... I don't know, I was expecting something special, girls. And BNT... Benete girls, I love you so much. You're amazing. I have so much respect to you. Why do you send a rock song, a rock band, rock entry after a rock entry won the contest? Like, this is not uh, a good thing. This is not a good thing. Like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. It, it, it had never been good to send similar a sound and similar music and the same genre to what have won Eurovision Song Contest last year. I don't think this is the best decision. Even though people like the song, even though people love the song, every time they will say, I love the song, but it's 
uh, you know, Manis King wannabe or something like that. They will always say that and this is never, a, you know, a good sign, a good reputation because people don't vote for, um, you know, this kind of songs and this kind of entries that are sent after. I think even this video is kind of rushed. Um, you've got the band in a room, like a white cube, and then you've got, you know, a woman walking through a field and you've got a kid playing a video game and I guess the kid playing the video game is supposed to be the twist and I don't know, it just doesn't hang together. If you're gonna give me rock, give me rock. Just give me a rock and roll video. I don't need all that. I would actually love to see Intelligent Music Project at Eurovision for Bulgaria, but not this year. Mm -mm, not this year. I would have preferred us to send something, you know, something unique, something Bulgarian. This song is like, you know, a song for an album, but it's not a single. It's not a single girl. It's not a single bass. It, mm, 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 mm. And the music video is very interesting, actually. And I, um, I think that it matches the the lyric of the song and the meaning of the song, because you know, in our lives, we are followed by our enemy, but our enemy is ourselves. My biggest enemy is me, Papa Nine One One, Papa Nine One One, Papa Nine One. And yeah, uh, someone is following this girl, and that someone is actually the girl herself, but her enemy, like her enemy is herself. Anyway, I wish Intelligent Music Project a huge success at Eurovision because you know Eurovision is the biggest stage in the world, and. They will, they will have their fans, they will have people who love the song. Yeah, I'm a little bit sad because, you know, it's my country and I love the best, and I want the best for my country, it's normal. I think the name might be problematic for some people. When you call yourself the Intelligent Music Project, I mean, it's a little patronizing, um, and people may take that the wrong way, be like, oh, excuse me, we're not intelligent enough for your music. This is what our blogger Robin in New Zealand had to say prior to the song reveal, just talking about the band's name. So, Bulgaria has internally selected the Intelligent Music Project. And they're a rock band, but they don't have a very rock and roll sounding name. It sounds more like some sort of audio art project, like uh, an audio landscape inside the inner psyche. I don't know, but they've been using the name for quite a few years now and it's working for them, so maybe it's okay. Um, the thing that I'm concerned about regarding their name is that it sort of sets them up. They have to provide intelligent music and if the viewer, viewers at home are going to be watching and if they even for a moment think, oh, that's not very intelligent, that's a bit silly, but not that there's anything wrong with that. Some of the best rock music out there is a bit silly. But if viewers have that moment of doubt, then it, the, the performance might not be all that impressive for them. We'll see. Um, the Intelligent Music Project's music actually reminds me a bit of the Scorpions, the late 80s uh, German rock band that had a massive international hit with their song, Wind of Change. And I think that's what the Intelligent Music projects seem to do best. They've got this vintage rock sound, a bit sort of nostalgic, uplifting. I can see it appealing to um, some Eurovision viewers, maybe old listeners who enjoyed groups like that back in the day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to know if it will have broader appeal to the general Eurovision audience. Um, we've been seeing um, like Georgia have also sent a rock band and it seems like Monoskin's win has inspired some rock bands to um, have a go at Eurovision. Um, it might be tempting to look at Monoskin and go, well they did really well out of Eurovision, they've toured in the United States, MTV Awards, um, not announcing Grammy nominees, you know, surely, surely the same would, would await for any other rock band to win Eurovision or, or do well. But I sort of think Monoskin are an outlier. They were really just a once in a lifetime kind of band. Um, I think a group like uh, the Important Music Project, uh, the Important Music Project, uh, the Important Music Project might just end up 
you know, getting booked for rock festivals around Europe. But you know, that's not a bad thing. And those are, are, are super fun for people who enjoy rock. Ultimately, I think this has some nice elements. Ronnie Romero is incredibly charismatic. When you look at him, you see a rocker, you hear a rocker. He's got great energy. I think, you know, there's certain moments, like the guitar flourish. It's one of those like cringe, but also cool moments. Maybe they can shoot some, I don't know, shoot some pyro out the guitar at that moment. Um, I think the opening verses are all right. Like the rhythm, like the flow, how it's building, the great harmony. But then the chorus just lets me down, not memorable. It just all feels very rushed. Um, this is just not an iconic entry, and I really think they need to go back to the drawing board. I read a lot of comments that people say this will be a non-qualifier. I think it will qualify for the final, but I don't think it will come, you know, top 10 or top 15. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just the way I think right now, but I think it will definitely qualify. I think that they are stuck firmly in the safety zone because we have heard all of this before. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Are you enjoying the Intelligent Music Project's intention? Is this a good intention or a bad intention? Do you think they should revamp the song, change the song? Let us know what you're thinking here on Wee Wee Blogs. This is our first Eurovision 2022 entry. Wow. I never thought that Bulgaria will release the first song for a, for a new Eurovision season. Wow. Like, wow. Look, keeping it real, this is my least favorite Bulgarian entry since their return. If love was the crime, I would not be a criminal because I know love here. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. We need your subscribers. Yes, we need your likes. We need your comments. Follow us on every social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And we will see you later. Ciao, Bye. ciao.